design thinking, unfortunately, has become su such a popular term, it's difficult to understand how people are using it anymore. And I've, I've kind of stayed away from it because I think it has, you know, it has marketing implications, it has political implications. I mean, there are all kinds of uh, variations of this. I think if you go back to some of the earliest writing, and I would point you particularly to some of the work that Nigel Cross and Bruce Archer did in the 1970s on design and general education, um, you still find some really strong descriptors there that don't have to rely on that term uh, to get things across. You know, um, understanding abductive conjectural thinking, um, using visual modeling uh, tools as ways of understanding things, um, you know, uh, questioning uh, kind of a holistic look at the problem. Um, and those are, those are actually, I think, initially what made design thinking attractive to lots of other fields. It, it has more to do with the execution, I think, than the intent uh, in a lot of cases that has made the term less clear uh, than we might have thought. Um, I've had two experiences uh, with teaching non-majors in particular, uh, in addition to some outside workshops. Uh, one of them was a course in graphic design theory. And I started that with 25 majors in graphic design. And it very quickly grew to 200 students from 30 different majors in the class. And that required a real shift in thinking about how to teach it. And it meant I had to meet those students where they were. Um, I had to use examples from their everyday experiences. I had to... Um, think about methods that were not steeped in the kind of tradition of design process. I had to think about the language I used. Um, and those students actually had a pretty good grasp on concepts uh, without that kind of overlay of the discipline to talk about it. And I, I mentioned in my notes that I was fortunate I had the design students in a studio so I could go down deep into those more disciplinary things with them in another venue. But um, there was just a lot of interest. You know, I don't know why 30, 30 different majors would sign up for a course in graphic design theory, but there was a lot of interest in how communication worked. And that, that seemed to be um, something that people saw as kind of point of entry in understanding their world. Um, it also meant that I had to adjust teaching strategies for a lecture class of 200 that I didn't need to worry about when I was teaching a seminar of 25. And that meant um, often what looked like a chaotic auditorium, but you know, using scenario-driven um, tests rather than fill-in-the-blank multiple choice tests, using uh, different kinds of uh, teaching methods that had the students teaching the class, um, putting them to, in small groups. And so breaking down that structure that you normally associate with somebody standing, you know, showing slides at the front of the room and 200 students sitting quietly in the auditorium. Um, and I think that physical engagement, um, the students owned the content a little bit more than they might have had I taught otherwise. The other example was a very large university study I was asked to design on teaching uh, critical and creative thinking across the curriculum. And the university identified this as a target for improving student learning. It involved close to 4,000 students and more than 200 faculty. And the goal was to influence every discipline within the university with some um, uh, pedagogy that would allow them to help students teach or help students do more creative work. Um, you know, creativity oftentimes is assigned to the arts and to design, but they're, you know, <laughs> putting somebody on the moon is a creative act. Uh, you know, writing a book is a creative act. So how do we help that kind of thinking develop in disciplines that are not as typically associated with creativity. And the way we did that was to train faculty in what are basically design-based pedagogies. You know, how to use scenarios, how to use visual modeling, 
how to use rubrics, uh, how to use uh, issues of you know, diagramming and mapping as ways of understanding concepts. Uh, and so we put faculty through uh, one week of training and then we followed them for two years in their classes and we had a number of uh, ways of collecting data on student performance. We used a critical thinking test developed by Tennessee Tech, which was very good for critical thinking, but was not very good for creative thinking. So uh, one of the tasks was to develop a rubric that could be used by faculty in any field to evaluate student work um, from a creative standpoint. And we found that um, faculty were really anxious to do creative work. They just didn't know how to score it. And scoring was a big deal. They had to give grades in the class. And so uh, of all the things that we gave faculty in that training, it was that rubric that got the highest marks from the faculty. And uh, they still use that today. And so I think uh, in many cases, what we've found is that there's a lot of openness and a lot of uh, interest in collaboration with design in these teaching methods, but um, it, takes, it takes some work to make sure that you meet on a common ground of understanding what you're evaluating and how those things are structured. Um, coincidentally, the highest uh, rate of change in student behavior was in large lecture classes. One of the things that we, um, we did was pick the classes that had the worst student reviews in the university, uh, the highest number of failures and the highest number of repeat courses to get a better grade. And those were, those large lecture classes is where there was the most student improvement. So uh, that was a good finding because the economics of universities put a lot of first year students in very large lecture classes where they're completely unknown to the faculty member don't do creative work and that sets the pace for them for the rest of their time in the university. Um, so if we could change that component alone, um, that was seen as a plus.